Hello, everybody. Everyone. Hi, Dimo. How are you? Good. Hi. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. I hope my connectivity issues uh, let me continue. <laughs> Does High Pledger has a new logo or? Yes. If you go to the to the uh, to the website, you will see that that there is a, a rebranding there. Pretty nice. Ah, nice. <laughs> cool. Looks good. All right, I think we can get started. Um, all right, welcome everyone to the AFJ weekly, bi-weekly uh, <laughs> um, working group call. Um, I need to remember you to abide by the high pledge code of conduct and the antitrust policy. If you would like to add yourself to the attendees list, feel free to do so. Um, I've posted the media link in the chat. Um, is there anyone new here today that would like to introduce themselves? Hey everyone, I'm Zdravko. I'm technical lead at Verein. Him, I think our CEO pinged you a bunch of times uh, via the email and uh, personal and some conference. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm here together with uh, my coworker Alex Wunin. Uh, we are specifically interested in uh, DIT conversion to implementation in um, AFJ. And that's why we are here uh, to look how we can help you guys to finish this feature. Cool, oh, sounds good. I, I uh, added it to the, to the agenda for today. Welcome. Um, all right. Um, so, um, any status updates about any of the calls that happened or other updates people would like to share? Yeah, I, I, I've added to the, to the wiki page, some uh, notes I, I took from, from the, from the meeting or from what I heard from the new meetings this week. Uh, I heard that, for instance, Bifold uh, suspended the meetings until September because they had a very low attendance. Uh, so no news from from there. Uh, from Aries call, uh, well, I, I think that the link is not correct, but uh, uh, yesterday they they were talking about we we were talking about mostly about the about the unqualified deeds migration. 
so yeah, so which, which is a, a topic that I've added to, for the agenda for today. So maybe we can discuss about it uh, later. But in mm -hmm. short, the mostly the most interesting thing is that uh, Sam showed a, a proposal to to discover the deep peer tree support by using uh, discover features. And then we had the, the, the classical discussion. Should we uh, talk about this here in Aries or, we, or should we go to deepcom.org? Oh, so, <laughs> so uh, I think that Sam will present this to, to the deepcom.org, to, to, to the deepcom user group, because it would be nice to have, uh, you know, you know that in, in the discover features, we have the concept of feature types, no? So, uh, and it will be nice to have a, a place where we can consult about existing feature types. So yeah. we can use it in our protocols or in, so uh, I think, so the, the, the outcome from, from this uh, discussion was that we will, we will find, or we'll try to find a, uh, some place on, on the com website to to add not only protocols but also this kind of of things and also for instance the, for, for, for the for this uh, discover feature for for the deep peer could be useful not only for the peer but also to discover any deep method that the other agent can support so that will be also useful for for that yeah sounds good nice yeah i think it would be useful to have um, a registry of uh discover feature types, because I think it could also be useful to share which of like the um, credential formats, exchanges um, you support, um, um, like besides just, I support issue credential V2, but it, it kind of matters of like which of the, the underlying um, attachment formats you support. Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, and then I, have, I, I added a, 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 a small note about the anon creds, uh, because in the anon creds arrest, uh, they are, uh, Akif is doing a, a, has done some job to, to some work to, for the upgrade to, I mean, to, to get rid from, from Ursa to, and go to the new anon cred CL signatures library. As you can see, Akif is, is Akif is here. Yeah. Uh, kindly ask you to <laughs> to to review it so it can yeah, be please. merged and <laughs> <laughs> because it will be nice for, for us. It, it it will be nice as well because uh, we would like to have it released before merging the the uh, revocable credential issues APR we have uh, since April. <laughs> yeah. So I've, I've updated the JavaScript wrappers, I believe. Um, uh, the tests seem to be passing for that. So yeah, I just wanted to get some feedback from the community before we move forward. But it uh, looks like the tests are all passing for the Python wrappers as well as the JavaScript wrappers and the library itself. So. Okay, yeah, I can take a look at the JavaScript stuff, but the Rust stuff, not so much. I um, added a review request to uh, um, let Parent take a look at it. Um, uh, yeah, so then we can get that merged. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. Nice work. And is this a breaking change in the... Anoncrats RS library, or is the public API the same? And is it just like underlying stuff? Um, it might be a breaking change because some of the methods uh, have removed some of the uh, parameters. So yeah, I think we'll have to. Well, it, it'll be constituted as a breaking change, I think. Okay, um, and only for... to the API, or also to any of the data formats, or like the the things that we store. No, none of the data formats is really just the API. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the, the, the main difference on from the API perspective is that the, we 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 don't have to to send the tail file 
when issuing or revoking credentials. It, this is uh, a good thing to, to have. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, any other status updates? Cool. Then uh, for the agenda, uh, I think you added these two, right, Ariel? Yes, 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 yes. I... Uh, and this one is left over from last time of, or? Yeah, but maybe, yeah, I, I, I haven't modified it, but uh, because it, uh, as, it, as it is uh, talking about the, the, the new release, maybe we can have some discussion about what, what, when, where, <laughs> during uh, the, the next release for AFJ. Or yeah, I, I I I have seen that you you added a you added a, um, a discussion about about what to uh, I mean in, in in GitHub you added a discussion about what what to have to for zero uh, five zero so maybe if we have some time yeah sounds good um, let me see I can. Did somebody unmute or wanted to say something? Yeah, I was just waiting for you to kind of get the thing you put in that you were doing. Um, yeah, so one other thing that came up in the uh, ARIES uh, working group call yesterday was related to um, the post that um, you did regarding um, you know, where your animal was planning to go with AFJ in regards to the uh, support for the European standards and the and the like, and the uh, I, th I think there was a consensus or at least a, a an interest in having kind of a larger community discussion about um, whether that should be like a strategic direction for all of the Aries projects. Um, so it sounds like the you know your your post had a an effect a swift kicks to a hornet's nest and <laughs> people are starting to say, oh, maybe we should be thinking about that. So that's another thing that came up. Cool. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah. Um, seems to be a lot of interest to to uh, have more support for EU standards, um, but that's good to hear. Um, I can add a link here for people that are interested. Um, uh, let me see. Uh, I think it's here. Uh, yeah. So what we're trying to do is basically making AFJ, extend AFJ with support for all the EU and ARF standards, um, which, um, uh, yeah, then in addition to Anoncrets, it will have full support for like OpenID, also for issuance, we'll add support for MDL uh, credentials, um, and basically, well, it will then support all exchange uh, protocols and, and credential formats um, and will really be more of like a, yeah, a toolbox for any SSI solution um, you want to build. Cool. Yeah, I, I, I've seen there, uh, there was a, a, a very good table uh, stating what, what is supported, what is not, that, that, that is something, I mean, where does AFJ stands right now in terms of uh, support for for that. Yeah, there's a hacking bee, I think. Um, I don't somewhere. remember. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can share that here. I think, uh, let me quickly, it's separate from like, it's more, it's like indeed taking stock of like, where are we right now with the framework? Um, Mm. Okay, I I would need to look into that, but if I have, I'll share it in the uh, in the in the Discord, um, so you can get an overview of like where are we right now. Cool. Um, any other uh, updates? Oh no, we were already done with the updates. We were at the agenda. <laughs> yes. Um, Okay. Um, 
then let's do you want to kick it off uh, uh, or are there any other uh so lost my rhythm here are there any other things we need to add to the agenda so we have these two from ariel um we wanted to discuss didcom v2 with the Verein team and uh, i saw artem is also on the call um and if we have time left we can look at beyond stuff but any other important things we want to discuss Cool. Okay. Do you want to uh, share, Ariel, or? No. Well, actually, it's it's uh, everything. Everything is there in, in in those links because I'm referencing where uh, where this uh, topic came from. Um, so the the idea, you know, I, I, I guess this this has been discussed in the, in the last. Uh, meetings as well but the the idea is that that we 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 as a community need to uh, to migrate from unqualified deeds to qualified deeds right i mean so the i'm talking in general i mean in areas community in general uh, so the, the the goal is to in 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 a in a magic date, as Stephen said to me, uh, we 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 all need to start supporting the peer uh, version uh, three. Uh, for that, we need also to support version two of, as well, which is something that we already support here in in AFJ, but it's not as far as I know, it's not supported right now by Akapai, uh, but the problem with this is with, with this strategy that was uh, 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 proposed by in, in, in the RFC in, in that one, I don't know if, if you can show it. Uh, yeah, that one, no, the, yeah. My understanding is, th is, is that it assumes that we that everybody supports either unqualified de deeds or I mean it doesn't take into account that we are using deed peer one in AFJ right now. Because there are there are a few steps where they say, okay, we have to support. First, we have to support both unqualified and the new transition form. Okay, and and later we we have an intermediate step, and finally we will deprecate the unqualified and and so on. But my concern when uh, trying to figure out how to implement it in AFJ is that it's maybe I I'm wrong. I hope and and I'm glad that. You, Timo, and, and Jaco are, are here because you are the ones who implemented the the, uh, the, did the connections and the did exchange protocol here. Is that we are using unqualified deeds for connection protocol, and we are using the peer one for did exchange. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, that is correct, but we transform the unqualified DIT to a DIT pair one DIT as well, and we still store also the unqualified DIT, but that's as a metadata to the DIT document uh, that we have stored. So internally, we only use qualified DIT pair one DITs. Um, yeah, um, so we don't have to deal with legacy DITs anymore uh, besides in the connection protocol implementation. Okay, but for instance, if we are if we are trying to if you want if we want to connect using this exchange with Akapai, we cannot right now. No. But I think that's I think that's an issue of Akapai because the DID exchange protocol has never supported unqualified DITs. Okay. <laughs> so so yeah, may, uh, I think our our strategy 
what would what would our intermediate strategy be? For instance, uh, maybe we, we we can show my my notes in. Ah, by the way, in the uh, I I added this uh, link to the to the pull request that Stevens uh, made. Uh, the add D three beer processing resolution. Yeah, that one, because they uh, they they would like you to 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 review or to merge it so they can uh, they can add the resulting uh, repo to the RFC as a as an attachment or some uh, or something like that. So just just to to remind you if you can if you can check it, check it as well. Yeah, I think we want to add it to the RFC, right? But we probably want to to merge it. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. Um, so yeah, about this strategy. So the for for this first step where we want to support every kind of of connections. Well, for, for this exchange, we are we are not going to support unqualified bits, right? For this exchange, so we will keep it uh, supporting only uh, the uh, the pure one uh, and two and 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 well, we will need to add support for the for the three, and we will respond using the same bit peer that we received. Yeah. Um, um, I did a first check and it's it seems that it shouldn't be so complicated to add to 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 support bit peer two and in this exchange it's just a matter of adding some because at, at the moment at the moment it it only uh, if you are using a, a bit peer two for this exchange with AFJ it will re reject it because it only allows in the exchange protocol to use the deep the, the deep yeah. one. The but reason not, um, yeah. why that was done at the time is that we have also had discussions in the Ares working group call is that the did exchange protocol describes only how, uh, like describes that you need to, if you change your key from the invitation to the response message you should sign the response with the key that was used in the invitation um, mm. and what you need to sign is you need to sign the did document attachment but if you use a did that uses the did document in the identifier itself you don't really have a, an attachment um, so yes. I think that's where we left with the implementation left less time on why did pair two was an issue So I don't know. Is there a solution for that already, or no? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, let me see there. Let me see there. I think Jakub opened an issue about it at the time. Um, hmm. Yeah, so this is the issue. If the DIT is resolvable, either an inline peer data, the DIT doc attached attribute should not be included. So signatures were never needed in a request, but it has to be included in the response for that. So um, I think we need a solution for this. I think um, we can probably make a very small um, like addition to the did exchange protocol that uh, mentions if you want to do a resolvable did, um, how you can sign, what you need to sign. I think that that is probably like the easiest to do here or not.
Okay. All right. I think, I think for the rest, it's probably, yeah, should be quite straightforward to support it pair two, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, I, I, I did a, a quick test yesterday and well, and there, there are a few things to, to tweak, but mm -hmm. yeah, of course it's not something uh, for this exchange, it, it, you see, you know that it's, for the exchange, it, it's okay, but then of course we, we will, uh, it's completely unnecessary. We are going to use always the, the deep peer uh, to in, in, in different exchanges. But yeah, in, in, in this case, uh, that we are using Litcom v1 is not is not is not a a, a big problem. Uh, so yeah, so uh, so uh, by the way, Timo, do do you know how other frameworks uh, handle this? I mean, for instance, the the, the, the Go framework. What, what what does it do in terms of the peer support or and the lead exchange? Because I know that they managed to make it work with Akapai in, in the test harness, but I don't know how. Yeah, they support did exchange with did pair one, and they made like hacks to make it work with Akapai and had like custom startup flags like for Akapai interop, which would have different behavior. Um, wow. So, um, yeah. Um, I think there are still issues open in Ekapai um, to fix that. Uh... Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So when doing a, a lead exchange, when we do the, 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 the request, we include uh, our DIV. So, if we are going to, if we want to have support for, for, I mean, if, if we want to, to, to be able to interact with any existing implementation, suppose we are, we are, we want to, to interact with, uh, with an AFJ 030 or 040. Uh, we should probably use the peer one for the data exchange request, right? And then we can ask through the, the, the discovery features if the other party supports uh, the peer two or so. Well, it's true that we did come with one if we already did this, the connection, we, we don't need to. To use the deep peer anymore, but so um, but we somewhere we we should have a flag or something that that will say what's the the default deep peer uh, deep peer uh, flavor we we are going to use for the data exchange, which for by by default will, will be one at the start. But then can can be updated to two or or, or, or three in in later stages of this uh, strategy. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. Um, or like we don't have to define it per se by default, right? Because if you make the the out of band invitation with an inline service, um, we could just look at what the request is. And if the request is a did pair one, we will make the response a did pair one. And if the request is a did pair two, we will make the response a did pair two, for example. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That, 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 that's the first uh, part of my, uh, my step one, if you see. The problem is if we are going to, if, if, if we are the ones who do the, the exchange request. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we are responding for an invitation. That I, I thought that also in doing something more, uh, uh, I, I think it's somewhere, 
I don't know if, if, I, if I write it, if I wrote it, but we, we can also do a, a kind of, uh, of pullback. I mean, we can we can try first with peer, peer two, and, and if, if, if it's rejected, we go to with peer one or something like that. Something similar to the to the discovery that you did for for the mediation protocol. You remember? Yeah. Um, maybe we can do some, something like that for the meantime. It's not yeah. uh, ideal, but we that. Uh, can ensure that we we are going to to be able to connect with uh, any agent. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's hope. Let, let's hope that that the, everybody has implemented properly the <laughs> the, 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 the 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 did exchange uh, uh, errors. I think at least for for AFA, AFA it's it's fine. Yeah, but um, and for for a, for a Kappa as well, eh? because I when I, I I did a test this week to connect uh, through this exchange and and and, and the Kappa properly uh, reject the this exchange with a problem report with the proper error code, so I, it should be fine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And 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 another questions I had as well is that about the. I think it's more. It's also a question you raised in the RFC about the connection protocol. We are going to leave it as it as it is right now. I mean, we are going to to update it as well to use the uh, peer, or we are just leaving it as using unqualified and that's it. Yeah, I think in my how I first understood it when we started this whole uh, thing of like. It was really a migration of DITs from unqualified to qualified and not making it a change to any protocols. Um, so that if you use DIT exchange, you can just use DIT pair uh, three or two if you want, uh, like with this change needed. Um, but for connection that we still use unqualified DITs because I think changing the connection protocol is like I would rather not that touch that implementation anymore and just have it be for um, backwards compatibility. And that we just, after we create a connection, like we already transform it to a did pair one did now, we just do that same transformation, but to a did pair two slash did pair three. Um, so I would rather not touch the connection protocol implementation. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so oh, of... What do you think? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh... So in terms of protocols, the only thing we should make sure in AFSHA is that we do support the DIT peer two and in, in DIT exchange and the peer three as well, of course. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I'm still not really a fan of DIT peer three because it means there's two DITs for the same DIT. Um, well, I think did pair one solved the issue quite well. Like you have a short identifier for a did document. Um, so then I think, because then we will need to have something, um, where both dits will resolve to the same, um, to the same did document. I mean, we, we can probably implement some hacks for it. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I know what, what you mean. Maybe we can, we can add a tag or something like that. We can do a find by by <laughs> query and, and get it. Yeah. 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 Because then, like, we have a connection record which has one of these two dits. So we would need to have like a a, a higher level implementation that knows that needs well, to look you, logic yeah. for specific dit methods, which is yeah, like you, not you very nice. You see that, that, that is, I, I, I made a note there as well. Connection record will probably need to add a field where the did for exchange will be defined or something like that. Uh, the, yeah, where is that? Uh, oh, yeah, here. Yeah. Did for, yeah, something hacky like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Jorge. 
Hey guys, uh, have a question. Um, in practical terms, can can you just help clarify uh, what the what the use case is for using data exchange versus out of band connection? Because uh, looking reading through the RFC, it seems like out of band is kind of like the the latest and greatest, and data exchange would, would be superseded. Um, no, so. Um connection protocol is superseded and um, out of band is for creating invitations and you can use that with did exchange or the connection protocol so out of band is just for the invitation um, so bootstrapping the exchange and then you can switch into either the connection or the did exchange protocol if you want to make a connection um, so um, this is really for this migration is for old connections um, that didn't use the did exchange protocol yet um, and still have unqualified identifiers um, and also making the interoperability between ARI's implementations and did peer and did exchange better. Yeah, maybe a, maybe a clarification is that uh, this is every, all these protocols are for deep conversion one. In in this conversion two, you still have this the out of band invitations, but we uh, but you are not using the the exchange because it's not needed for this conversion. Maybe it, that's what you were referring, Jorge. Uh, that that makes sense. Thank you. That that clarifies it. Yeah. Okay. Um, I would like to also still get to a bit of the other topics. Um. Do we have a good strategy for AFJ with this, or are there any outstanding topics, Ariel? I think it's uh, your explanation clarified a lot of things to me. So let's hope that I can <laughs> I can do an an, an implementation uh, with that with without any major issues. But 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 yeah, we we will we, we can discuss it later. Okay, cool. Thanks for bring this together, that's helpful. Um, cool, then the plug fest. Yeah, this, 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 I think this will be a short one because for the plug fest that will be held in October, well, actually it's, it's already running, but, uh, but the, the, the demo will be run in October. Uh, we, the idea is to to be able to do uh, to receive some credentials in uh, and and do some presentations, right? This is more or less, in short, what what we should show. Uh, I mean, different wallet implementers have to demonstrate interoperability using different credential formats or and and, and transport mechanisms and protocols. Uh, so basically, in terms of protocols, we have three options. We have the we have DITCOM, we have the VC API, and the OpenID Connect. Yeah. The for VC API and OpenID Connect, uh, it seems like I, well, there are no major issues. But for DITCOM, we couldn't find a an standard way or I couldn't find at least uh, any any consensus about uh, what to use if we are going to use it com v1 v2 uh, I tried I made some uh, I, I wrote some emails and also uh, discussed in uh, open the discussion on, on on the slack channel for for uh, the black face but nobody answered so it seems like Probably, probably there will be no uh, did come uh, tests for for the plug fest. But in but it, it, in in any case, I think that the uh, for for what I have analyzed from other parties that support did come other than Animo and us, <laughs> uh, they are using did come v two. So. Uh, and also it makes sense because the, the Compute 2 is the wider approach. So 
And in that case, in that case, we will need if, if we want to 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 uh, to create an endpoint or something to 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 issue and and present credentials using uh, Didcom, I think we will need to add the support of Didcom V2 that we are talking in a in a few minutes. Uh, but also to to add support for this uh, watchy watchy. Uh, uh, Presentation exchange. I mean the the issue credential tree and present proof tree dot zero. I think it's not so different from the from what we support already, but it is something that we should uh, implement. And on the other hand, and this is more a question for me, for for you, right? for team especially, or anyone from Animo, but I don't know if if is anywhere if anybody else, is that. Uh, with 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 the current support of OpenID Connect from from the from the framework, is it possible to to receive and present referral credentials using that protocol? For I mean, with OpenID, yes. Um, so receiving, yes. Um, proving not merged into the. AFJ branch yet because we we implemented it in our uh, wallet, um, but we were a bit tight on deadline and we hadn't used these standards as much yet. So we didn't want to rush making an implementation in AFJ without knowing what would be a good API. Um, so we have a, um, so on our GitHub, uh, we, have it let me see yeah so we have an open day for vc client which is copied from uh Aris framework uh javascript because it's also dependent on a like an unstable version like a packed version of of this one for which the pr is then we're open in um in the Shurion, uh oh um repository so it's dependent on this pr which okay. well needs to be merged so that's why it's all not um in afj but like if you see here we have uh, a client api and in there no it's where is it oh it's in the presentations part there's like um an open e for verify for the proving part as well um, and presentation exchange and all these things. So um, it should be doable to get that in AFJ, um, but it's not in there yet. Okay, but but you will say that that it works. I mean, it's uh, or or not. <laughs> yeah, it works. It work. Okay, okay. So it, it's just a matter of of adapting it and making it properly. And yeah, but I'm I. I guess that it will be faster to support that instead of, well, let's see what happened with the DITCOM V2, but. <laughs> yeah. We'll uh, we, are, we are close, okay. Yeah, and for like DITCOM V2, we would also need like the PAX attachment format still, um, which we can now do. There was a branch open from Mike for this, um, but that was also an issue we discovered with this. And so it doesn't fully work yet is that there were a lot of uh, issues with uh, the PEX library we were using, uh, but I think they fixed a lot of those issues. So I think now we can um, add it in here um, and we could base that off the, like in here we have a presentation exchange service, which does like all the heavy lifting for selecting credentials, creating presentations, these kind of things. So um it should be straightforward to do it for the PAX attachment format um and then we would just need to have the new credential protocols but those could i think they're basically the same as v2 but for didcom v2 so that would probably be a copy paste mostly yeah um yeah so biggest task now is probably the yeah didcom v2 stuff okay Nice. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, we are going to, because we also submitted to, to join PlugFest3, we are for now going to do it with OpenID um, standards. Um, and like for next time, if then did v 2 is ready and uh, we have the other protocols implemented, then we would like to do it also with um, DITCOM as well. Um, and, and then we could also uh, provide like as AFJ um, community a DITCOM v2 issuer uh, for, for that. Okay. Cool, okay. Any other stuff on this? No, I think we can move on to the DITCOM v2 party. <laughs> yes. Okay, um, DITCOM v2, um, well, work has been open for a while. Um, I think maybe Artin can give an update and then we can also look at like, how can Farin, um get involved into the development of this uh, and uh, contribute to this um, so we can get it ready. Um, yeah, uh, Artem, do you want to give an update or? Uh, the only update from my side is uh, this month I handled uh, the last chunk of comments uh, you left in the PR. Uh, main one is moving uh, creation of connection from trust pink to the receiving any message uh, and uh, waking. Uh, it's ready to take one more look uh, these changes. And uh, once we get it merged, uh, the next step, uh, uh, I believe we can merge it in main and sync, at least we can sync with the main because I, I think it's a lot of behind of it already. And uh, the next step, there will be supporting of uh, road, routing and mediation protocols for Bitcoin V2. Okay. Um, and this introduces some breaking changes, right? Because um, I'm thinking like if, if we could already merge this without mediation support, for example, I think I would be uh, for that. But if it introduces breaking changes, then we probably again gonna have um, an issue with, um, yeah, that we can't release the main branch for a while until everything is in place. Um, do you know like what the breaking changes are, or whether that be possible, or like what do you think would be the best to do here? Uh, you mean breaking changes if we release without uh, mediation support, or, or breaking changes for DeepConv1? Or well, if we want to merge this right now into the main branch, um, there are breaking changes, right, to the API. Uh, I don't remember any. Okay. Uh, I can check, uh, but uh, from API point of view, they're just uh, optional uh, params, which can be passed. Uh, there shouldn't be changes in internal structures, uh, which are stored in database, but I can uh, uh, review it once again and double check. Okay. Uh, now, 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 now in, in the API, you, you specific, for instance, when you create a connection or, or create an invitation, you, you specify if you want to, to accept uh, V1 and V2 or, or, or both, or for, how, how does it work? Uh, when you create, yeah, when you create out of band invitations, there is optional param to specify which version of the product messaging to use. Uh, and uh, yeah, depending on the version specified, default one is v1. Uh, next message expected to be the same version. Okay, but but in, but the is it is it possible to create an invitation that supports both v1 and v2? Uh, this is just kind of strange uh, because uh, I think if party doesn't support 
uh, the general format of uh, V2 protocol, he was unable, wasn't be able to proceed at all. Uh, like I, uh, he will not I'm, be able I'm... to respond with previous version if he doesn't respond uh, support V2 at all because the messages has completely different format. Yeah, I, I'm thinking mostly on, for instance, having a, a, a single QR code that allows uh, allows to connect uh, from older agents and new agents as well, so that they can they can uh, easily choose if they are, want to use V1 or V2, mostly because of that. Yeah, I, I was thinking something like like what Timo say uh, just is showing us. If we are going to use the uh, out of one one dot one, if we use, I, I think it there is another type for didcom v two. We do have this didcom slash aip two, but there are there are also an, another one for for v two. Yeah, that one. You read my mind, Timo. <laughs> I think that would be nice because because in, in in that way we can we can ensure that we are going to to support both v1 and v2 uh, peers yeah um yeah i agree i think this this makes sense that we could create a didcom v1 out of band message where we have an accept of didcom slash v2 and then if it would be okay to receive a didcom v2 message afterwards uh, for it. Um, yeah, I think that makes sense. Um, it, it would be probably like a bit more complex if we need to implement this everywhere, uh, because then we always need to look at the right and what is it didcom v2 that is sending this. And I don't think we do any of these checks right now. Um, so maybe this is something we can address in a follow-up future like once didcom v2 support has been merged and released already do you agree ariel yes but anyway i will i would like to add, to add it as soon as possible because yeah. <laughs> i think this, this is something important but but anyway i will i will try to take a look at the i, I mean i i didn't have the time this this week uh, today but but, but uh, i will i will try to 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 play a, a bit with with this with this uh, branch to see if I can I can contribute as well. Cool. Um, Yaku, Yaku wants to talk. Yeah. Yes, that's nice. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. M maybe I I'm missing something, but you know, I'm I'm just looking to specification for Bitcoin V2, and the, it also introduces out of band invitation so i'm not sure like do we really want to support out of band v like do we want to really support uh didcom v2 in out of band invitation v1 to 1.1 because i i would rather move forward forward than trying to combine those things together if it's but i don't know what i i, I it seems like as from what you said is it's not so easy to do it maybe there might be some problems with like supporting the uh, didcom v2 inside or like all together with oobv 1.1 uh therefore i'm not sure like maybe is, is it like worth it because like yeah isn't it isn't it easier to just at this OOBV2. And may, maybe it's a question to current PR. Like, is there is there the message for out of band uh, for Ditcom V2? Or I, I would rather I would rather yes, like yes, do yes. it like if, to, if, yeah. Uh, yeah, to answer way. like the uh, I don't know if it's in the PR, but to answer why um this is here and why I also think it's a good thing and why the accept was added is that um with every new version of an invitation, you have a new interoperability problem because you have a new type of URL you need to support and parse. Um, and what this allows is that I could support a v1.1 invitation and I could parse that. And if it says like, I also support didcom v2, I could use that or the other way around. 
if I don't support Ditcom V2 yet, but I do spend the time to implement a, uh, to support a out of band V2 invitation, um, then it could still say like in the invitation, it accepts Ditcom V1. So that way I can still connect and, and it, it solves a bit of an interoperability problem um, between the different um, QR formats, I think. So it, it, it broadens a bit of the like um, ways you can connect, but the accept parameter specifies the order of preference. So once we support V2, I would think like we would always add the ditcom slash V2 parameter first, for example, but you can also still support ditcom V1, uh, if that makes sense. Uh, kind of, uh, but is it? Yeah, maybe I'm. I'm like I don't understand fully. What, is there any difference in like what's inside accept and what's inside handshake protocols? Like, should should it be because handshake protocols contains uh, protocol types, right? So should it be aligned somehow? Is there a difference in that? Yeah, I, I can imagine that it might be helpful, but uh like yeah if, if i if i want to use ditcom v2 i probably should send invitation for ditcom v2 uh. and yeah okay but on other party like uh the 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 invitation for ditcom v2 won't be recognized right so it would it wouldn't be possible to answer that. Yeah, but is but that I your think, point, Timo? But but, like, but I think I think that yeah. if if we to 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 this very same invitation message we, we are seeing here, if we add the accept didcom slash v2, the other party will just send a message to us because in didcom v2 v2 we don't need to use any handshake protocol, right? Or I'm I'm wrong. <laughs> Yeah. So they they will ignore this uh, this uh, field, the handshake protocol, and, and the services uh, yeah. as well. Well, for the, for the services, uh, it should use a did. Um, we have one minute left. Maybe quickly. Um, this PR, uh, like there was updates to the Ditcom v2 PR for connections. Um, we'll take another look at that. How can, uh, for example, Farine get involved in the contributions to this? Like, how do we, can we coordinate this? Actually, here from Varane, that would be very lovely if somehow we kind of a slowly start getting into. What we agree internally, it's we'll start, well, we know the framework well now and we'll review more deeply the tasks which are coming up in that sense. And my next question would be, is there anywhere defined tasks for v, uh, DITCOM V2? Like if we can somehow... A discussion, yes, that's the, that's the, that's the good. We can add a discussion for DITCOM V2 and then we can, there we can at the, the tasks we, we, we identified in order to, mm -hmm. to speak the tasks. And if for sure at the beginning it would be not easy for us to jump into, of course, and maybe some kind of a uh, introduction, direct channel of communication would be very lovely. If you have such or it's everything happens through comments in the tickets. Is there any process for communication or it's only through a GitLab? Uh, I think most communication on GitHub uh, okay. would be best because then it's just in a public yeah. place. Um, Normal for open source project, absolutely. Good. We can, of course, use this meeting as well, right? I mean, yeah. we will have another one in two weeks. So we can do a follow up and do discussions like, well, like we had today for the did peer support. But for, for oh, that's very helpful. Today. You said in two weeks. I thought it's every week. 
Yeah, but for for this summer, <laughs> we, ah. we took some. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're taking so. vacations? Okay. <laughs> no, no, not me because I'm. It's <laughs> I know. I'm just kidding. It's winter for me, so I, I mean, What's... in the south part of the world. So. <laughs> but oh, yeah, I'm sorry. For <laughs> for most of you, yeah. So. And like say Lunin, if you cannot also like say Lunin. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah, the, 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 next, the next one will be uh, the 17th of August. Okay, good. So as I said, we are quite interesting and very happy to, to jump into and try to, to help and get involved within the community because we believe it's one way to drive the progress in general of the whole community by evolving slowly the, the features and uh, the enablements that can come directly from the framework. Cool, okay. Well, then um, let's uh, continue the discussion in the GitHub discussion and we'll discuss it again in two weeks. Two weeks. Um, thanks everyone for joining and uh, see you next time. See you. Bye thanks. for now. Bye, Bye everyone.